yes, I started as a champion, I think, less than two years ago. And at the same time, um, Brett approached me and said, would you take on this new program that we want to have in, the, in our view for product technologies? And um, foolishly, for a week, I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. I'll take on a program. Um, and we've spent a lot of time, as you see from Dean's um, uh, presentation, there's a lot of remote technologies that are in play across the RWM program, um, satellites, drones, the, the sewer bats, um, and we felt more recently that we probably wanted to, uh, before the decision to take sabbatical from RWM, that we wanted to maybe give the remote technologies program a new lease of life by rebranding it and also giving it a new direction. Um, and so we are <coughs> a new name, thanks Brett, Edge Technologies. Now this doesn't mean to say that everything has to be on the cutting edge because we're water corporations and we don't live on the cutting edge. What we do is we take tried and tested technology and we reapply it into our operations, which is cutting edge for us because what we're doing is brilliant, but we're not taking that risk of that real brand cutting edge technology. So it's called Edge because we want to be able to embrace all types of technology, not just remote technology. Remote technologies still have their place and we've done extensive trials with drones, we've done remote um, mowers, um, Dean is busy looking at the satellite monitoring as well, which is another great use of, of remote technology. And these all feed very nicely into other programs. So David's data and analytics is all about the technology bringing in the information into your organisation so that you can then make decisions uh, and better uh, predictive planning because that technology is doing the work for you, bringing it in and then you're not being able to analyse it. So all these things have great linkages across IWA. So Edge Technologies has its place to look at the physical technology. So this is not the, this is the hardware part of things. This is like the gadgets and the toys and the physical, you know, vehicles or, or assets that you can get your hands on, uh, rather than the application of how it then, you know, uh, is used within the organisation. So for instance, so in Edge Technologies, um, how about 3D printing? 3D printing, it's not a new technology, it has been around for years, um, but we haven't probably fully embraced it in, in the water industry. Some of us have got 3D printers. I've got a little thousand dollar 3D printer on my desk and I knocked this little sign up in 20 minutes yesterday, which is a little parting gift to Brett, so I shall give you that Brett. <laughs> um, and so for a thousand dollars, what I can do is just play with 3D printing at my desk. Um, I can print out size, you know, size of parts. And, and the difference between 3D printers is just that a thousand dollar machine has a small bed, it's the size of a little laser printer, so the part that you can print out is small. Uh, for three thousand dollars we invested in a 3D printer for our electrical and mechanical division, and now they take their 3D modeling beyond the software, and what they do is print out their prototype parts at their desk, shape it, play with it, think about it, is do I need to make a tweak here or there before it goes off into manufacture. And that's actually created quite a bit of efficiency for us because before they were doing the modelling in the software and thinking, well, that's right, now let's send it off for production, but now we can actually produce it in plastic, play with it, tweak it, and, and $3,000. I mean, who can't spend $3,000 to be able to create that efficiency? There's other, there's thirty to forty thousand dollar machines. Again, they just go up in size. The printed beds are a lot larger. I think Southeast Waters printers around that price mark for the one that they're using for their prototyping. I think, David. Um, I didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also in three D printing. What we've done in at GMW is partnered with CSIRO. They've got two million dollar plus machines in their lab um, in Clayton and their metallic additive manufacturing machine. So I had this wonderful vision that we would print out our assets, metallic assets, through 3D printing. Can't invest $2 million in printers, they take up half a room, anyway. Um, but what CSIRO does do, and this is something we want to exploit potentially through this program, is for a couple of thousand dollars, you can attend a, a training accreditation on one of their machines, or one of our metering guys did that. We put him through the training, he spent a day there, part of his training was to use the 3D printer to print a part, and we produced a pintle cup, 
which is looks like a glorified fruit bowl. It's made out of metal. I can't lift it. It's on my desk. It currently holds on my paper clips, which the engineers would be horrified at. Um, but it's actually going to be put into production in, in a weir gauge, you know. So it will sit at the bottom of a hinge, um, and it does, you know, it sits on the bottom of the weir, and the, the hinge of the gate sits, sort of sits within that printer cup. And we produce that via a 3D printing uh, metallic additive manufacturing process with CSI Roll. So for a few thousand dollars, we could get, you know, out of the could potentially pay for um, representatives to go over to CSIRO and get that accreditation. Once you've got that two, tier two accreditation, you can book a machine at CSIRO yourself for a project that you might have at your water pump and say, we're going to go and spend half a day, we're going to use that machine, we're going to produce something, we're going to learn from it. So you, know, you don't have to invest in that major technology. So we want to explore things like that and what use is 3D printing might bring beyond just the little badge sign that I produced for, for breakfast today. Other things, um, I know David talked about artificial intelligence, so we'll leave that in that data and analytics space, but other technologies that are linked, what about wearables? Wearables are, are a growing technology. We're very much in a field of oh and We've got people are our greatest asset. I know we like to play with technology, but people at the end of the day are your greatest asset. What are the wearables that are around that might be able to help our people out on the ground? Driver technologies, um, sun safe technologies, long monitoring. I mean, who, who have workers that go out to sites and they're long monitoring? So wearables can bring some added extra. So you're linking your person via what they're wearing and the location that they're in back to the headquarters and you can make sure if that spot doesn't move for a few hours, you know, is that person safe and well and, and checking. So wearables, I think, is a great area that we can look into. Um, in the same vein as remote technologies like drones, um, most people, I'm sure most water boards at the moment, are thinking about what the future of autonomous vehicles are going to be on their fleet policies. And if people are not thinking about it in their fleet program, then they should be, because they do predict that within 10 years, autonomous vehicles are going to account for about 80% of the, the vehicles on the road. That's cars, so that's one element of autonomy, um, and, and which will be impacted by. A lot of wood corporations do have large fleets, you know, because um, I think, is, was it um, David, where you see, instead of sending somebody out to the ground when you had the photo, you know, you do it from the desk, so you're saving time, you know, and, and effort. It does cost a lot of money to put people out in vehicles and on roads. But what about planting equipment, you know? My vision is that once you've done the drone, the drone's gone down the leak, provides that information, that machine then goes out to that spot and does the actual, you know, digging, excavating, um, and, and, and heavy plant work because it's linked via technology and data rather than people getting into a vehicle and then going out. On our channels, we can only detect lit where the grass is green, um, which is similar to Dean's satellite monitoring. Um, and uh, we go, people go and sense check it by going, is the ground wet? Yes, we must have a leak in this channel because the ground's wet. Well, to put somebody out there through that process, they'd have to walk for kilometres. You send a drone, find the green patch, and then spot check the excavator to that green patch the lift to get to get there, you know, through autonomous means. Um, and virtual reality, there's been a lot of play in the virtual reality space within this program. Um, uh, Melbourne Water have got some great uh, results from virtual reality, and I think you've won an award for your health and safety use uh, of virtual reality. Uh, and augmented reality is, uh, is another component of that. And we have talked about it and presented at it through IWN on a number of times, but we can make that, pardon the pun, a reality rather than a virtual reality. Why aren't we exploring it more? What other things can we do? So these are just some of my ideas for the new direction of the program. But really, this is a blank piece of paper. By moving it from remote technologies to edge technologies, we're saying that whoever is the new program leader has got a license to put, you know, to investigate whatever the water corps think are technologies that they're interested in. So these are some ideas, but idea, the ideas of what we should be doing in the edge technologies needs to come from you and from your contacts within your own organisation. What are things that you have wanted to investigate, have got the money or the time to do, bring it into IWM, bring it into this program. Um, and, and let's get some collaborative work actually, you know, on this. It's shared learnings, um, shared costs, 
um, shared effort to get a project developed. Um, and I think it's an exciting place to be technologies um, for anyone who's in innovation, you know, who wouldn't want to run this? I mean, if, I wasn't, if it wasn't for the decision of organisation, I would still be here doing the programme. Um, so we've got a new name, we've got a new direction, which is a black piece of paper, fabulous. So the trifecta to this story is we need a new lead. I can't do this anymore. Um, and the lead has to come, ta-da, from the people in this room. A champion who's willing to step up and say, you know what, I'll give that a go. I'd like to run the technologies program. And I think Ben and Steve said it very well in their presentation when they said the program lead doesn't manage all the projects. You know, you're not that your time's not taken to manage all the projects. You're connecting people, you're overseeing the programs. We want individuals um, like Erica running Matt Dam's project for Michael in their water course, doing what they know best, but bringing that back into IWN, and you're the facilitator of that process. So through the champions, we would like to ask for someone to step forward to be a lead. You might not want to put your hand up right now in this moment in time, but I think you should have a good think about it over coffee and lunch and tap Brett on the shoulder to say, I would like to do that. And for me, um, what it's done for me is that we're a relatively large rural corporation, but with very, very little interaction, probably apart from Melbourne Water, and then our distribution water co companies within our distribution network like Colliban and Lower, who are up or upstream or downstream of our, of our water network. And we have very little to do with the urban water corporations. So for me, what is it provided is an amazing network. Like I know somebody now in every single water corporation. I've got contacts in Wannan, South Gippsland, and we would never have had any commonalities of business with those water corporations. And even if you're look, even if we're not working on the same things, the fact that you've got somebody else to send check, there's somebody else that you can contact and say, hey, you know, what are your thoughts about this? How, you know, what, how would you approach it? What are you, you know, what do you gain? I, I wouldn't have had any of those contacts if I'd just kept working on GMW's R&D, and I didn't come into this forum and look at the water industry. I've learned a lot more about what the water industry does at large. Um, so for a collaboration, it's probably the best experience that you'll have. Sharing your costs, it's critical to share costs because water corps, we don't have money floating around to just invest in innovation. So this is it. This is where your money goes and this is where the, you know, the, the money power is. Um, we don't have time and energy to dedicate people to individual projects so that you've already got 20 to 30 people already willing and able to run projects for you, like just in this room, and then your contacts beyond that. So immediately, you have got an expansive R&D team that you can run without investing in an R&D team. Um, and so I think you know that opportunity is limitless. So that's it for me. Right.